Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Richard Hatch. With guest stars Darlene Carr, John Lenn, Roy Poole, Jordan Rhodes, Frank Marth. Special guest star, Mark Hamill. Tonight's episode, Innocent No More. I work a little early. Where's your cousin? Yeah, he, uh, he got sick. Okay, look, you stick with Billy. He'll show you what to do. Okay, now 20 minutes, no more. You guys understand? Okay, come on, let's split up. Let's go. Come on. I don't want the place to go on fire. That's it. <laughs> you didn't have to use every candle in the house. Well, it's not my fault your age overwhelms my cake. Oh, it isn't, huh? No. Happy birthday, darling. Mm. <laughs> good to have you home. Oh, it's good to be home. So what do you want to do? Open up your presents or eat first? Do I have a choice? Nope. The specialty of the house is waiting, and I don't want it to dry out. So you open the wine, and I'll get hey, it Hey, what specialty are you making? Wait a minute. I don't get so nosy. Mm. Something really terrific. <laughs> What was that? What? I thought I heard something. Never mind. Open the wine. Put on a record. Russian music. Oh. That's a hint. Oh. <coughs> hey, I've got a surprise for you, too. You better set another plate. All right. I only made enough for two. I guess I should have fed him first, huh? Well, I guess he took care of that. He was sniffing your Kiev. Not mine, but yours. Where'd he come from? Mrs. Harper down the street. She was going away for the weekend, and she needed a sitter. And you volunteered. Do you mind? No, no, no. Does he have a name? <laughs> Little Darling. <laughs> Corny, huh? Yeah, like Mrs. Harper. <laughs> well, for this weekend, you're going to be called fella. Hmm? <laughs> I'll put him away. Now you tell us where the money box is, lady. Oh, no. Or he's going to burn your treasure. No, please. It's not where's the money, lady? Come on, where's the money? No. Where is the money, lady? I don't have time for this. Think uh, fast, lady. Upstairs. Come on. Upstairs where, lady? Come on. Closet. Closet. Where in the closet, lady? All right, come on, let's go. Here. Uh -oh. Wouldn't make much of a bonfire anyway. 
It's past 20 minutes. Let's go. Man, we got all her money. We're not leaving yet. Now, her husband is a jeweler. This says so. He must have given her lots of little gifts, rings, stuff like that. They've got to be around here someplace. Lady, now you best tell me where they are. Hey, Billy, you crazy. Stop it, man. She can't tell you nothing. Listen, somebody must have called the cops. Let's get out of here. Hold it. Hey, take it easy. All right, hands on the fence. Come on, spread them. Spread them. Come on, let's go. Let me go. Why are you hassling me for? I wasn't doing nothing. You won't be needing that now, will you, kid? There's his plaything. Stick it in your ear. That don't belong to me. He planted it. I want to see my P.O. You'll see him, kid. Paul T. Brown, age 15. Here's his sheet. About an hour ago, they hit three houses on the south side. Only this time, somebody died. Her name's Mrs. Helen King. 65, she had a coronary. Was she beaten? We don't know. How many do you have in custody? Two, both juvenile. One of them's no problem. He's got eight priors. They caught him with a shiv. We're gonna slap him with parole violation. What about the other one? Well, he's sweet 16. Good-looking, well-mannered, real boy scout. Go on. Well, so far, Mike, the evidence is pretty skimpy. Boy's father's here to take him home. All right, so what's the big problem? But the boy's father's Bob Wilson. That's right, building contractor, ex-city supervisor, and so he says, a real close friend of yours. You know, Mike, when I was his age, I was laying brick for 40 cents an hour. Hard work was something to be proud of. Today, <laughs> today it's a crime. We've gone wrong somewhere, haven't we? All of us. Nowadays, if a kid wants something, all he has to do is just ask for it. Oh, look, Mike, Billy didn't steal anything. He doesn't have to. Mike, I know my son. I know my son just as well as you know your daughter. He is innocent. Did you know that your boy was out tonight? Yeah, he went out to see a friend. Paul Brown? I don't think that they know each other. They go to the same school. Well, now, that's guilt by association. But I guess that's the way that it is, huh? I mean, this whole new system, huh? Bussing kids from one area to another area, mixing the hardened criminals with kids like Billy. Oh, I'm not saying that Billy's perfect. No, he's had his share of schoolyard scraps. But basically, Mike, believe me, he is a very good boy. Bob, what do you expect me to do? Talk to the DA. Have him drop the charges. In the interest of, of justice, say. I think he means as a personal favor. Hold it. What about the other boy? The one with the knife? Should I let him go, too? I don't care. Mr. Wilson, that lady was murdered. My son had nothing to do with that. Look, Mike, please. The kid, he's only 16. Bob, you don't seem to understand. There are no criminal charges. The juvenile court is just a civil proceeding. I want all proceedings dropped. How can I do that? How can I hold on to one suspect and let the other one go? Sure, sure, sure. I get the message. I get the message. No favors. Do you have a lawyer? Don't bother. I'll have Harry Clark handle it. You know, I thought I had a friend. I'll say one thing for him. He buys the best. Harry Clark will have that kid out before lunch. It stinks, doesn't it? What? The poor go to jail and the rich go home? Not just that. The whole juvenile system. If Billy Clark were 21 and guilty of felony and murder, he'd be put away for life. But because he's young of age and supposedly innocent of mind, he'll get his wrist slapped, three months of probation, and be free to kill again. It's a laugh. Nobody's laughing. That's why these games like the Jackals exist. Because the law's a joke to them. Take a look at this. 
in just two months, that one lousy gang has committed 42 acts of robbery, assault, burglary, felony animal torture, and now murder. And all against the old and the defenseless, and all in the same two-mile area. They may not be brave or bold, but they're sure as hell not afraid of the law. I take it you have a suggestion. No, just lots of anger. Well, I do. Let's go home. Tomorrow morning, I'll check with the DA and find out what our chances are for getting criminal indictments against any of that gang we arrest. Meanwhile, how do I handle the Wilson case? Routinely. He could be innocent. Dan, are you talking about Billy Wilson? Yeah, what do you got? Plenty. His prints were everywhere inside the King house. Billy Wilson's as guilty as sin. No, sir. I didn't know why they were chasing me. I was really scared. I mean, I told the officer I was on my way to see a friend of mine, Roger Santini, but he wouldn't listen. All right, let's get back to the fingerprints. Well, like I told Mr. Clark, I sell newspaper subscriptions door to door. Extra money. So I was in the house a couple, three days ago. Gee, she was a real nice lady. Did she buy any? Mike. No, she didn't. Most of the time, she was just showing me things. She had a lot of antiques. She sure did, all over the house. All right, son. Thanks. Well, I'm really sick. Now, let's see the judges and things read the probation report. Don't worry, everything's gonna be fine. Thanks, Mike. Nice kid. Intelligent, soft-spoken, sincere. I think you're making a mistake. Oh, come on. Do you really believe all that stuff about him selling subscriptions and all that? I'm paid to. That's what I like about you. Mike, why press? The lady died of a heart attack. The DA couldn't get manslaughter on her. Now, why don't you go and tell that to her husband? That's where I'm going now. Would you like to join me? You're yeah, sure. Okay, we'll have a man take you downtown and she'll take a statement from you. Thank you. Mike, we got a break. An eyewitness. The guy was driving past last night when he almost hit one of the kids running out of the house. Was it the Wilson kid? No, it wasn't Brown either. A kid named Tommy Ditto. He ID'd him from these mug shots. Did you pick the boy up? I'm still looking for him. I put a stake out in the house. Anything else? Well, the lab guys inside found a strand of hair. Could be Wilson's. You think he's guilty? Mike, I did some more checking with R&I. And like I said, the kid's never been convicted, but he's been arrested five times. Suspicion of assault, battery, grand theft, and one for extortion. The last one got him suspended from school for a month. The kid's got a history of violence, and the old man's covering up for him. The body was right over there, tied with a nylon guitar string. Could be a lead. That's the husband. Mr. King? Mr. King, this is Lieutenant Stone, head of homicide. We'll be out of here soon. You know, I was out for the evening. Is there anything I can do? Do you know who they were? Well, we have several boys in custody. I understand. It's, it's hard to prove a case. Whatever the law says, it's God's will. They're only children. One can't blame them. They're only children. Got a forgiving nature. I don't know if I would. Yeah, well, Max, let me know how you make out with that strand of hair and the guitar string as soon as you can, will you? Oh, listen, wait a minute. Why don't you stay here with them? If they pick up that Dito kid, let me know immediately. Okay. Mike, have you got a minute? I know what you want, Carl. You want a state. Well, I don't have one for you. Well, somebody better start speaking out. 
You know, we're doing another TV editorial on these teenage gang attacks, and people are pretty uptight. Now, do you have any comment at all on those two that were arrested last night? No, they're being processed normally. Uh, processed or handled, Mike? What are you getting at? Well, I got a call this morning from Judge Brewster, who just happens to be presiding over the juvenile docket this month. Yes, I know who he is. Yes, well, do you also know that he's a close golfing buddy of Bob Wilson's? Anyway, he's threatened to place a gag order on the case if our broadcast as much as mentions the name of a suspect. Now, that seems to me as if the defendants have a lot of friends in court. It's about time the victims had some friends in court, too, don't you think? What if they pick me up? So what? They can't do nothing. Henry, that lady died. So tell the judge you're sorry. Come on, man. There's nothing to worry about, OK? So cool it. No, Billy's in jail, man. They're going to be asking him a Look, lot of man, questions. Look, man, Billy can take care of himself. Polly too. Hey, you, you think I wouldn't do something if they tried to give him a hard time? Man, that's my brother we're talking about. I know. Hey, come on. You, you just worry about uh, your share of the cut, all right? Let me worry about the cops. Hey, man, they can't touch us. Mr. Billings' office. Oh, yes, Judge. My time with you, that's why the DA wanted Just me to handle minute, the please. case. But I'm not going to charge these kids with felonies unless the case is strong enough. Your office is getting some pressure, huh? Well, you better believe it. Jerry. Good morning, Carol. Oh, it's a new hairdo. It's a new wig. You really are old-fashioned. This is Judge Brewster, second time around. Tell him I'll call him back. Anything else? Yes, you have an appointment with Carlton at 4, and Harry Clark wants to set up a luncheon with you. Well, I'll bet he does. Uh, Jerry, can I see you? Well, the public defender's office has got a complaint, right? OK, Jake, I'll be with you in a minute. Carol, see if you can get me the name of that principal at Carlson High School. Come on in, Mike. Judge Brewster, can he call you back in just a moment? Well, you talk about pressure. 8 o'clock this morning, I'm still shaking. Guess who calls? Brewster. Right. <laughs> morning, Jerry. How's the golf game? I said, fine, fine. So we talked about sports for about five minutes before he finally got down to the point. He says, listen, Jerry, I understand you people are thinking about petitioning a few juvenile cases back to county for felony trial. I said, well, Jerry, I just want to make sure you understand it's discretionary with the court. I could just hear the wheels turning. Yeah, and that's not all. Guess who he's assigned to the cases? Judge Mildred Burns will be the hearing officer, the most lenient judge he could find. Somebody's scared, Mike. You're right, somebody is scared. Mildred Burns, she's fair, though. I've known her for a long time. Why don't you take a look at this? There's some things in there you should know about Billy Wilson. Come in. The principal's name is Joseph Hess, and our dedicated public defender is still waiting. Yeah, I know. What does Jake want? He wants equal time for his client, Paul Brown. If Wilson is released, then he wants his boy to go free, too. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Everybody goes free. Nobody's responsible, right? I might take it easy. I'll take it easy. You just make sure that the probation officer gets copies of those. Where are you going? Try and find out who Billy Wilson really is. And if he's guilty of murder, he's going to stand trial just like everybody else. <laughs> This is Lieutenant Stone, Donald. Just let him see it. There's nothing to be frightened of. Billy Wilson did that? No one saw him do it, so it couldn't be proved. He stole money to give the Wilson boy for three weeks before it came out. Donald, would you be willing to tell the judge how you got those scars? Good. All right, Donald, you can get back to the game. Thank you. I told Mrs. Wilson the whole story, but of course she wouldn't believe it. What about Mr. Wilson? Oh, I don't know what he believes. I've tried to talk to him several times, but he always denies the reality. Anyway, I expect Billy has him conned. He's bright enough. What do you think makes the boy tick, do you know? Oh, some kids turn bad because of neglect, others because of they're too spoiled. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist, but I can tell you Billy Wilson's disturbed and violent. I saw him attack more than one boy out here. When I call him on it, 
He blames somebody else, denies any responsibility. Truth is, I guess he just doesn't care. Director 8-1, do you read? Mr. Hess, will you be willing to testify? I mean, about the boy's character. Yes, of course. I'll have the DA get in touch with you. Inspector 8-1. Inspectors 8-1, go ahead. Mike, we've located the Dito boy, 31st and Charles. Better get over here. What's going on? He's on the rooftop, threatening to jump. <laughs> He's pretty scared. Did you read him his rights? Yeah, first thing. He's ready to talk. He's already blaming everything on Billy Wilson. How old is he? 16. Book him. On what charge? First degree murder. I want that whole gang of hoodlums charged as adults. They're not children anymore, not when they maim and torture people. No, sirree. I want them all put away for as long as the law will allow. I understand the court's reluctance to have any child taken from the juvenile system. It's a good one. And for most young boys, it would help them rehabilitate themselves. But not in this instance, Your Honor. You have the history of his arrest, testimony of a school principal, and an injured child as to his true character, all attesting that Billy Wilson would not be amenable to anyone's guidance. Now, most of that is hearsay. There is no direct evidence that he ever We had have any... plenty of direct evidence if that's what you want, counsel. Enough to show a presumption of guilt. We have the testimony of the arresting officers, his fingerprints, strand of hair at the site, and even a confession from one of his I gang... I object. That confession was not only coerced, it's been repudiated. All right, we're not in a criminal trial, Mr. Clark. We're only here to see if the boy can be helped. Lieutenant Stone, you don't make many appearances in this court. Have you some special interest in this case? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Not in this case alone, but in all cases dealing with gang violence by juveniles. Your Honor, I don't think the issue here is rehabilitation. I don't know whether Billy Wilson can be helped or not. But I do know that if we don't make the punishments match the crimes, if we don't show these vicious juveniles that they can't get away with murder, then there's no system of law that can govern this city. None except the law of the jungle. Your Honor, may I say something? No, Harry, you may not. I think we've heard your best arguments. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, I think you've been less than candid about the past conduct of your son. The scars on that boy's back and the honesty of his words convince me that he hasn't lied about your son. I'm well aware that these street gangs have become more violent than ever. And I agree with you, Lieutenant that these brutal, lawless attacks on the most vulnerable in our society must stop. Now, I don't know whether you're a member of such a gang. I can only assume by the accusations before me that you are. In any case, the evidence has convinced me that you're not a fit and proper subject for juvenile jurisdiction. I therefore hold that you be remanded to the adult division for criminal proceedings. <laughs> Okay, Jerry, off the record, maybe I agree with you. These gangs are not a sociological problem, they're criminal. But why'd you have to pick the Wilson kid to kick it off? He came up first, Harry. Simple as that. Nothing's that simple, believe me. Now, look, the decision is final. We're going for criminal indictments on all members of that gang. It's your neck. I hear your station's gonna make some kind of an editorial statement about all of this. Uh-huh, on the 3 o'clock news. We're asking for mandatory criminal proceedings against all 16-year-olds. That is, in cases of repeated felonies involving bodily harm. Now, do you have any comment about that, Mike? Oh, I'm not a lawyer. OK. Let me ask you another. I've heard a rumor that two more members of that gang were picked up. Is that true? Yes, it's true. But we don't want it broadcast because we're still looking for the others. No broadcast, OK? Okay.
Hello? Who is this? You don't know me, lady. But I know you. I know where you live. And I also know when you're gonna die. Which is gonna be real soon unless my brother's let go. I, I don't understand. I... Look, lady, I am talking about the jackals! You just make sure the lieutenant gets my message. I got the message, all right. And now you're going to get one from me. Nobody goes free. Mike, I know how you feel. So does Billy. Yes, sir, I really do. That's why I wanted you to talk to him. He had nothing to do with that phone call. And he's willing to turn state's evidence. Oh, he is, eh? You recommend total immunity, and Billy will give you the names and addresses of everyone. The whole pack. No deal. And if he's convicted, I'm going to recommend hard time. And you'd better believe it. Half of this nation's crimes are being committed by juveniles. And more by children under 15 than by adults over 25. Now, we're speaking of the repeated offenders, the hardcore delinquent who has a history of violence. Grand jury over? Yeah, they voted true bills on three of them, and I think we're going to get John Doe indictments on the rest. You should be discretionary with the courts any longer. Georgia now rules that children of 13 can be tried for serious crimes. New Mexico has lowered the age to 15. But in California, it's still 16. California maintains its position that 16-year-olds are not to be tried by the same laws existing for adults. Makes sense to me. Mike, got a second? Yeah. I need you okay for a search warrant. What for? When I questioned Mrs. Wilson, she said Billy had never owned a guitar. Well, she lied. She bought one about six months ago. Here's a bill to sale. I also found out he took lessons at home. I'd like to look around. All right, it's worth a try. Hey, Mike, line two. Line two. Okay. Homicide, Stone. Guess you didn't get my message, Stone. Maybe this time you'll listen. She's 5'2", short blonde hair, fair complexion. Her name's Jean Stone. Right, I'll hold. I had that frame 20 years ago. Mike. I... I should have sent her off to school. Gotten her out of town. I never thought that... You couldn't know. I knew. Oh, I knew, I knew. He said he knew where she lived and, and when she would die. Yeah, thank you. Mike, I checked all the hospitals, all the local precincts. There's no word. You know, she could have just gone to visit a friend. Sometimes I wonder why anybody wants to go into public service. Oh. oh, my God. No wonder you were so frightened. <laughs> oh, must have broken in just after I left. Oh, look at this. It doesn't matter now as long as you're OK. Oh. It doesn't matter at all, believe me. Oh, I'm fine. Hey, I think I could use a drink. <laughs> and you look like you need one. <laughs> There's some wine in the yeah. refrigerator. Yes. <laughs> You're all right. I'm okay. I'm okay. 
I'll call downtown and let them know everything's okay. <laughs> yeah, you do that. Mike, I think we better lay on a security team just in case. Huh? That's right. Until she gets back to Arizona. <laughs> Don't look for your daughter. I'd almost forgotten how wet it gets out here early in the morning. Mm, feels good, huh? Yeah, sure does. <sighs> well, ready? Huh? Yeah. Let's jog out to the rocks. Okay. Remember when you caught your last ocean perch? Five years? Nope, it was longer than that. You know, I think we ought to try it again this summer. Your mother and I used to come out here regularly. She knew just where to drop the line. Right out there. <laughs> God, we used to come out here all the time, even when I was on the force. Your mother was a sportsman of the family, I'll tell you that. She just loved surf fishing. I don't know how she did it, but every time we came out, she caught something. <laughs> You wish you were here right now, don't you? Well, when she was alive, we had more of a family feeling then for the three of us. Simply hasn't been the same, has it? It has for me. You know, Jeannie, I've been thinking, when you get out of school this year, maybe I ought to turn my badge in. Retire? Why? Well, we could spend more time together. Oh, I see. You want to take care of me the rest of my life, huh? Oh, of course not. <laughs> well, then you're ready to vegetate? No. No, I'm not ready to vegetate. Maybe I just don't want to be in the line of fire anymore. OK, well, I guess that's up to you. But don't you dare quit on my account. Look, I just think that maybe we ought to be spending more time together, and I can't do that working 24 hours a day. Mike Stone, there is no way you're going to push this off on me. Look, I love you, but I can't live with you acting like a father. Oh, come on, Jeannie. And don't genie me. Look, if I'd wanted a provider and protector, I could have grabbed one a long time ago. So thank you very much. But if you ever retire, you do it when you have a lot better reason than taking care of your little girl. Oh, come on now. You're not the only reason. I'm 56 years old. You know that? 56 years old. And maybe I'm tired of being a, a target for all those dumb teenage psychos. OK, all right. But that's your decision. You do what you think is right. Only you're responsible, not me. All I can do is worry about you. After all, when you're destitute, the law says children have to support their parents. <laughs> That'll be the day when you have to support me, let me tell you. <laughs> People versus Brim. The defendant ready to make his plea? Yes, Your Honor. Charge is assault with a deadly weapon and resisting an officer. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Bail is set at 2,500. Defendant will be held over to Department 31, February 6th. What are you doing here? Uh, message from the boss. When bail comes up on Wilson, don't argue. What? Next case is People versus Wilson. What are you talking about? It's all arranged. Don't argue.
charge is murder in the first degree. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Request trial by jury. Defendant will be held over to Department 40 on March 10th. The defense renews his motion for bail. Has the district attorney been notified? Yes, Your Honor. We, uh, we have no objections. Motion approved. Once bond is secured, defendant will be released. Jerry, what the hell is going on? I don't know, Carl. I do. You made a deal. Now, what about Paul Brown, huh? He stays. Oh, that's real sweet. I can see it pays to have rich friends. You planning to run for office soon? Wait a minute, Jerry. What is he oh, talking about? Talk now. Now. Oh, wait a minute. Get off my back, Carl. All I can tell you, Carl, is that I didn't knuckle under to anybody. Well, what do you mean you didn't knuckle under? That's exactly what it does look like. All right, have it your way. Jerry, I don't want it my way. Don't you understand that? All I want is the truth. Now, why did you let that kid go out on the street? I'm sorry. No comment. OK, I won't broadcast that. Not yet. Because I've always believed that you were straight, Jerry. But if I find out that you've been playing politics, I will nail you for it. I promise you that. OK. Will somebody tell me what's going on? I mean, right now, everybody thinks I can be reached, that I have been. I want them all, Jerry, every last one of them. And Billy Wilson's going to lead us to them. The DA bought our plan. What plan? Billy's going to be tailed from the minute he gets out. If I were him, I wouldn't go anywhere near those others. You would if you were scared not to. What is it those guys hate the most? They've got a thousand names for it. Rat, Fink, Stooley. But Billy didn't talk. The Dito kid did. The guys outside don't know that. And Billy doesn't know it either. All he knows is the word's out, he's the fink. How did you manage that? Well, I have a friend who's a jailer, and he happened to get next to Billy Wilson, and he just happened to drop it. That's a dirty pool, Mike. I love it. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Billy also knows that he's the only one to be released. If I were him, I'd figure I owed somebody an explanation. <laughs> OK. Billy! Later. Wait! Wait for your father! I'll be back. But he just called. He's on his way. Mom, will you get off my back? This is important. Stone, reservation for two. Very nice. I thought you'd like it. <laughs> you knew I'd like it. Something's wrong, right? Oh, I just thought we ought to have lunch together more often. If you're hungry, try the trout. What's the surprise? Surprise? Dad, you haven't picked me up for lunch in the middle of the week since I can't remember when. Consider it your birthday present. Thank you. You have a suspicious nature, you know that? And well-deserved. OK. I do have a surprise. I've decided not to retire. <laughs> well, that's hardly a surprise. Oh, it isn't? The only surprise is that it took you so long to decide. Well, now that the shock of this announcement is over, what do you say we order lunch? Eat it slowly and enjoy it. Take a look at those prices. Well, I'll enjoy my lunch, but I don't think you will. Started the shooting. I don't know. Came out of nowhere. The special unit was about to move in with bang. Can you see anything? No. The cops all over the place. You brought them, didn't you? No. 
why they let you go, isn't it? No, listen, huh? I swear I didn't. Huh? You sold me out, I man. swear I didn't. You people inside, come out with your hands up. Come out with your hands up. Nobody has to get hurt. You see where the last shot came from? We don't want to hurt anybody. Come out now. Come out with your hands up. Come on, there's a way out back. Let's go. Off me. I didn't do anything. You can't hold me, Stone. Okay, let's all turn left. The other way, number three. Turn left. Take your hands out of your pockets. Turn left. Let's face forward. That's the one, third one on the right. Number four, he's the leader. You're absolutely sure? Yes, I wouldn't forget him. He broke my arm. Henry Brown, Paul Brown's brother. Had a big influence on him, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Tanner, take care of him, will you? Take your jacket off, number two. Is that all of them? Well, that's all we know of for certain. Well, what about the sniper up on the roof? Well, he got away. We don't know what he was shooting at or who. Mike, the search warrant just paid off. We found this at the Wilson house, buried in the trash, and it's only missing one string, the low E. The same kind used on Mrs. King. Does Billings know about this? No, I had to clear with the lab boys. Listen, I think he's with Wilson at the prelim. Come on. Well, uh, beside running, what did he do to call your attention to him? He tried to escape. Wasn't it the fact that everybody was running? How could you tell one boy from another, the innocent from the guilty? Did he have a weapon on him? No, sir. A mask? No. Money, jewels, anything that might lead you to believe he had committed a crime of any sort? No, sir. Well, in other words, Officer Haig, all you ever did was arrest a frightened, running boy. No further questions. Mr. Billings? Uh, no redirect, Your Honor. Sergeant, you're excused. Mr. Billings, uh, any more testimony for the prosecution? Yes, Your Honor. With the court's permission, I would like to recall Mrs. Robert Wilson to the stand. Mrs. Wilson, may I remind you you're still under oath? Mrs. Wilson. Have you ever seen this guitar before? I don't think so. Look closely. One of its strings is missing, isn't it? Yes. You do know that Mrs. King, the murdered victim, was bound by a guitar string, don't you? Objection. No foundation. Sustained. Mrs. Wilson, you made a prior statement to the investigating officers that your son had never owned a guitar. Is that correct? This is a bill paid for by you for the sale of a guitar and private music lessons in your home for your son. Is that your signature? Yes. Then your son did have a guitar around the house, didn't he? And this is it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that is not mine. I've never seen it before. I've not come. Where did he keep it, Mrs. Wilson? In his room? Yes. 
Was it there the night he was arrested? Yes. And how did it get buried in the trash? Not by Billy. He couldn't. You put it there, didn't you, Mrs. Wilson? After you read the newspaper. I didn't know what else to do. I thought it might prove something. It does, Mrs. Wilson. It does. Billy. Billy. <laughs> I'll suggest that the boy plead no law if you won't bring charges against the mother. Okay, Harry. I'll arrange to have his plea taken first thing tomorrow morning. Get Get, out. Get away from him. Get away. I'm going to kill him. Don't shoot, Mr. King. Now get away. It's all over. I promise you, it's all over. Oh, he's going to be punished. I promise you that. Believe me, he will. But not that way. Not with that. Not with the same violence which he committed on your wife. She wouldn't want that. He ought to die. Then let it be God's will. You said that, remember? Please, Mr. King, put it down. Sniper is. There's vengeance in all of us. Somebody over there said if we didn't do our job, they'd do it for us. With this. That's something I don't want to happen. Ever. show no regard for either life or property. This court is convinced that you would be a menace on the street. I therefore sentence you to state prison to serve out a term of eight years to life. Bailiff, take charge of the prisoner. Jerry, wait a minute. Mike asked me to give you this file. Thought you might want to go over to robbery to question a witness. Come on now, Dan. This isn't a one-horse show. Is there anybody else? Nope. Well, you do have a way with words. Where's Mike anyway? I thought he'd be here. You're not going to believe it. What? Buying a dog. <laughs> Think Mrs. Harper will like him? Well, of course she will. He's beautiful. Yes, he is, and he's cute too, huh? <laughs> You're kind of cute too, you know that? <laughs> oh, you sweet little baby. <laughs> 